Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, I recently bought a Mercedes C250 saloon in silver. Then I bought a Mercedes C250 estate in black. So I thought, why not complete the set with the C250 coupe? I was offered this car yesterday. Quick overtake, all 272 horsepower V8, still performs well. Although my air suspension is currently inactive. I won't mention that. I was offered this car yesterday from a car trader friend of mine, and he only wanted £3,750 for it. So I thought, of that sort of money, there's got to be some profit in it. You know, I just got 7995 for the Silver Saloon. I got 5995 for the Black Estate. So this C250 Coupe should sit somewhere between those two figures. So I thought at 3750 if I can keep my spend to £1,000, maybe a little bit more. We all know it'll be a little bit more. Let's say, let's say this car owes me £5,000 fully prepped then if I can get six and a half or 6995 for it, then there's a decent profit margin. I haven't actually seen the car yet, but I do know a few things about it. I know that it's a 2012, I know that it's gray, and I know that it's done 110,000 miles. That's it. I've had it dropped off for me on my car park, so that's where we're heading right now. I shall see you there. Well, we're here and looks all right, you know. They're a good looking car, the C-Class Coupe, especially in gray. It's got the sport wheels, which, to be fair, look like they could do with being refurbished. Looks all right, though. I think it's got a glass... It does. It's got a panoramic roof, a glass roof. I think at 3750 I think I'm almost guaranteed some profit. So long as, so long as someone's maintained it. I mean, the bodywork, I suppose it's hard to tell in this weather, but the bodywork looks okay. I've spotted a land sail with a chunk out the sidewall. So we're certainly into a pair of tyres, I suppose. Yeah, MG wheels, they need a refurb. That's pretty good though. I think it's got Xenons because it's got a headlamp wash. Right, that's pretty good. As always then, let me do a quick vehicle history check using Car Vertical. Got a fault with my air suspension. Don't ask. It's really easy to use. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg or the VIN. In this case, it is Lima Golf. Life's good. So it's a London car. 12 Golf Victor Romeo. Check vehicle. This is currently checking hundreds of millions of cars across dozens of countries' databases. I think it works in like 35 different countries. So it'll tell us whether it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or got outstanding finance on it. It's really important that you do one of these checks before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike. If you use my promo code HIGHPEAK, or one word by the way, you'll get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. Alternatively, click the link below in the video description. We're nearly there now, it's just checking databases in Sweden, Slovakia. Okay then. I think just as I did with the saloon and the estate, I think I'll take it over to SPR, my Mercedes specialist that I use in Stockport, and get them to do an engine and gearbox service before I do anything else. Just get them to check it over. Right, this is all ready, so view reports. Yeah, we're all clear, right, so never been stolen, we're all clear on all fronts there, perfect. The last known mileage, ah, right, it had an MOT last month at 110,000 miles. You can see here that it had another one in the same month, so it must have failed and then been passed again, so it must have had some remedial work, but the mileage is consistent every year. There's a blip there where it's gone up the same month and then gone down again, so I suspect that's been a typo, that's why it hasn't flagged. They obviously realise it's a mistake and then corrected it. So that is a C250 CDI Coupe. Seven speed, very good. Let's see if we've got a clean MOT then. So it's had a couple of private regs. Yeah, another private plate there. So we've got quite a few advisor items here. Uh, suspension arm, pin or bush, worn, tyres, brake pipes. That's a really common issue on this era of, of C-Class. I had to do it on both the Silver Saloon and the Black Estate. So I suspect I'll have to do it with this one as well. Tires, tires, tires. Okay, so we might need to set of tires. Rear coil's been corroded. That's not the end of the world. Right, I think then I'll have to get those jobs done and then run it through a fresh MOT. No one wants to buy a car with that number of advisor items. Let's go and have a look around it. Well, we've got both sets of keys, which is always a good sign, and they're in decent condition as well. So that's good. I think we've just managed to dodge the rain. Oh no, here comes the rain again. Yeah, they're a good looking car, aren't they, the coupe? We've got a very curbed wheel here, and it's on a land sail. On, it's probably got about two mil of tread left. 
so I can see why they advise those. The brake discs, mm, they're not too bad actually. I think rather than cheap out on these wheel refurbs, they're quite badly corroded. Rather than sand them down and paint them, I'm going to have to have them dipped and then powder coated. So that's a job for prestige wheels. It'll be a bit more expensive, but it's the only way to get better results. Because I can't just sand that down and paint over, it'll just come back. We've got another land sale back here, which I don't like to see. Someone's put cheap tyres on this. That's a bit better, that's probably in about 4 mil. I think I might treat this to a decent set of tyres, you know. It's a proper car, isn't it? So, a bit of a scuff here. That would buff back, actually. I think I could improve that. My rear light's not cracked. Yeah, pan roof, that's quite a good option. Someone's revving the car there. I suspect someone's gone over the road there for a test drive or to look around a car and they're revving it, which really winds me up. What are you trying to prove? Yeah, so more curb damage here. But yeah, the brake discs are okay. That, yeah, is on about two mil of tread. Made in China land sales, I didn't know that. Makes sense, because they are always the cheapest. Quite straight down the panels though. No dents or anything. Body works all right. Have we got a fourth land sale? We do. We bloody well do. That again is a little bit better, so it's on about four mil, but it's a rear wheel drive sporty coupe. It wants a proper set of tyres, doesn't it? Here comes the rain. Gotta make this quick, hadn't I? Looks pretty good though, this. Only got a single exhaust. It's the C250, so that is a 204 horsepower version of the old 2.1. They also did a C200, I think, and a 220 with lower power outputs. All right, let me get inside. For all the heavens open. Well, it's quite, yeah, it's quite dirty. It's not too bad. It does need a good old clean though. We've got AMG mats, look at that. Wonder if they make it go faster. Yeah, does need a good old clean. A little bit of, a mm, bit of ash there. I don't like smoking in cars. We've got power folding mirrors, electric mirrors, electric windows. There's jazzy lights. And how do we open this blind? Does that work or not? We've done a hundred thousand miles. Uh, sorry, one hundred and ten thousand miles. Have we got any warning lights on? Low fuel. My engine light's gone out. The Frankie Valley there. Well, my blind works. That's good. By the looks of it, does that open as well? I don't try it, but I suspect that opens. Hmm. That's a job for another day. We've got no heated seats. I don't know who'd spec a car like this with no heated seats. We've got part leather, part cloth. Uh, just needs a very good clean, really, doesn't it? Every time I drive a C-Class Coupe like this, I always think I'd run around in something like this. It'd make more sense, wouldn't it, than doing 17 miles per gallon, that whole thing. We've got sat-nav. So, that all seems to work. Although we do have a line here on the screen, don't we? Hmm, wonder if we could buy a replacement screen for it. Right, that's quite a good option. Then the fact we've got nav, it'll be that Becker system, won't it, which is plugged in there. We've got, we won't have a service book with this because Mercedes went digital ages ago. We've got all the manuals there, locking wheel nuts, that's all good. Here then, right, we've got a wad of paperwork. That's good to see. Let me spin this around then so I don't reveal anyone's address. How many owners has this car had? Four. Three previous. It's about average, isn't it, I suppose? So, yeah, we've got a digital printoff here of the service record. Ah, oh, look at this, right. This gets better. So, it's a 2012 car, so it was serviced in 2013. Mercedes, 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 the first three while it was under warranty, that's always the case. So, serviced in 13, 14, 15, 
then Mercedes specialists all the way through 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 this is perfect so if I do one more then ah, Deutsch Autohaus Stuckenfield right they're very good actually I haven't used them but I have heard good things about them that was done at 104 last September hang on a minute don't want to reveal anyone's name here but I think we've got more pages let's spin this back around right this had a engine service and a gearbox service at 110,000 miles, 400. Who does that? Who does that? So it's had a B service plus an automatic transmission service at a cost of £568. Then they traded it in. That's weird, isn't it? Why would anyone do that? Unless, I suppose, they've then had it MOT'd and they've been presented with that long list and they've been put off they've thought, hang on a minute, I've spent too much money on this car, I'm not going to spend another £1,000 at it. Let me sell it to some idiot. Like me. Right. Well, this has got proper history. Everything's itemised as well. This gets better and better and better. It was sold to the previous owner by Dace, German car centre in Stockport. Very good. And they've got a decent reputation, generally. No one does this. This car, this car, this car had another service, another gearbox service at 43,000 miles. That's good going, isn't it? So it's had two. So it's done 110 and it's had two gearbox services. Right, on the last list then, in addition to its MOT advisory items, there are some workshop notes which read as follows. Are you ready? Wiper noisy but clear screen okay. I can soon put a new set of blades on. Front brake pipes corroded, near side rear brake pipe corroded. Wheel bolt missing, near side rear, MOT fail, so they must have done that then. The brake pads are on 8mm or 30% worn, so 70% good. If your glass is half full, not half empty. What else can I tell you about it? Does my air conditioning work? Let's try that then. Aircon on. Get rid of those, I think. Ah, it's working. This is a good sign. Very good. How do I eject disc? Is it a front loaded thing? Is it? I don't know. It's... Those wipers are fine. I don't know what we're talking about. Right, let's take it for a drive then and see see if it performs all right. I suspect with this sort of history, it should be fine. Right, we're quite low on fuel, but should be enough for a quick drive, shouldn't it? I've never had that fault with that stereo system before. I've had it with loads of other things, but never on a C-Class. Well, overall then, I'm still quite happy with this purchase, 3750. I need four tyres and wheel refurbs, uh, but no engine service, no gearbox service, so that's good. That saved me 600 quid straight away, which is good going. I'm quite happy with the spec of the car, that's good. Needs a good old clean, but no, I think there's a car here. I think it could well be worth six, seven, something like that. What should I do first then? What's my first job with this? I think, I know you always think I do this in the wrong order, but I think I'm gonna go and give this a clean first. Spend 20 pounds on it, having a mini valet done. At least it'll look a bit better. Then I suppose run it to my mechanics for four new tires, get those brake pipes done, get a clean MOT done, see what they find with it. Maybe that's the best course of action, I think. And then once it's all done, I think my final piece of the jigsaw is to get it over to Prestige Wheels and get the wheels refurbished. Then, of course, send it for a proper valet. Then I think I've got a decent retail car. I initially said when we were driving to this car that my spend would be about 12.50. I think that will still be the case. I should be there or thereabouts, though, I think. I think. I'm actually pleased with how it drives. On the black one, there was a load of vibration here and it turned out to be engine and gearbox mounts. It only happened under load. This one isn't doing that, so that's fine. On the silver one, I had an engine light on, which turned out to be DPF related, and some sort of pipe was split. Again, this one's fine. What a miserable autumnal day. I hate autumn. I hate winter. It drives really well, this, you know. The steering feels good. I'm quite happy with it. 
I think I'm going to stop for some fuel, take it for a wash, and then crack on with all the work. So, I shall try and keep you informed with what happens. Give me, give me a couple of weeks for this. This might be a two-week turnaround job. Right, I'll have some news for you soon. Cheers, guys. And we're back in the cheap Mercedes Coupe. And for a car that didn't need an awful lot doing to it, it has added up to quite a considerable amount. After we last spoke, I didn't actually get on with the work right away. A customer got in touch and their car had broken down, so I got it back for repair, but the part was on back order for two or three weeks, and they wanted something a little bit better than my iGo. So I thought, hmm, why don't I just tax this up and lend them this instead? It's much nicer than iGo, I think we'll all agree. And of course, it wasn't yet on sale, so I thought rather than taking a fully prepared car off the forecourt and potentially lose a sale, this one just seems to make more sense. And I think it worked kept everybody happy anyway. When I finally got it back two or three weeks later, then I finally got on with the pre-sale prep. Ah, that's my Picanto out on a test drive. Fingers crossed that sells. That, by the way, is an 11,000 mile Kia Picanto that I've had in stock for two months. Not had a single inquiry on it. It's nice, it's got full history, low miles, it's prepared well, it's fairly priced, and yet nothing until now. As soon as I got this car back, I took it straight down to my mechanic for a service, an MOT, and just a general check over. They also found that it needed two tyres, which was a bit of a result because I thought it needed four. It's been a while now since I filmed the intro to this, so I can't quite remember, but I'm sure I thought that it needed all four. Anyway, two were fine. While it was still down there, I asked my mechanic to whip out the driver's seat. If you remember, it had a rip on the, on the bolster. Typical Mercedes, really. The fake leather, the faux leather the Artico or whatever it's called, always seems to crack and rip. So when they're taking that out, I called Phil, the upholstery guy. He came out, picked it up, and did a nice, neat repair on it. And now you'd never know. Then I had the wheels refurbished because they were quite scruffy. They really let the car down. So I called my mate Luke, who runs like one of those mobile wheel refurb places. He comes out in his van and just does them there and then. So he sprayed them back in silver for me, and they now look really good. Anyway, I think the final job was to give this car a good detail clean, so I dropped it off with the detailing guys in Romley. And when I picked it up from there, I really felt like I'd done my job. I turned this car that looked a little bit, a little bit tatty and, and dowdy, and made it worthy of anyone's forecourt. So I was quite pleased with myself. Oh, I nearly forgot actually. In between all that, I screwed on some brand new number plates myself. They always lift a car, don't they? Right, then let me talk you through my costs. Let's see if there's any profit left in this. I've currently got this advertised for 6795, so I'm hoping there is. The only downside with having a sunroof is you do get the odd squeak from it. I'll turn this off for now. I paid £3,750 for the car. My bill at my mechanics was £265.59. That included an oil change, two front tyres, MOT test fee and labour. Uh, what else? The wheels cost me £190. The valet cost me £95. The seat repair cost me £120. The number plates cost me £15. So... My total spend was £885.59. So if we add that to the 3750, 3759, my grand total is £4,635. So if I can get, well, we get 6750 for it, then I've made just over £2,000, which I was kind of hoping for on day one. And I don't see why I won't really. I've had loads of these C Class Mercedes coupes. I say loads, I don't know, a dozen maybe in the last few years. They're really good cars. Every time I get one, I always think, I should just have something like that for myself. Rather than running a big, thirsty petrol that only does 20 miles per gallon, I should run something like this that'll do 35, 40. Anyway, enough of that sensible talk. Right, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers, guys. See you next time.